Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. I hope that you're all doing well. I'm filming in my bedroom for a change and I actually really like the way that this is looking. Let me know if you like this filming background setup we have going on. Okay, so for today we are going to be talking all about my plant goals for 2022. I originally was not going to do this video because I do have a full plant goal slash resolutions video on my Patreon and I go really into like kind of overall or like broad goals and where I want to go with my plant collection. I really like that video um, and obviously I wasn't gonna redo it, um, so I'm not. This video is actually gonna be different from that video. But if you do wanna watch the other one too, subscribe to my Patreon. But today's video is gonna be different because I'm gonna be talking about very specific goals like for individual plants. I was inspired to do this by Plant Friend Down the Street, which is an awesome YouTube channel. I absolutely love her videos, so go check her out. But she did a video talking about her plant goals, and I loved how it was just like very specific, like she talked about individual plants. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Very excited. Um, I cannot wait for this year's growing season. Can't wait for the spring. I'm just, I'm so pumped for that. We got a little bit of sunshine today, and it really just like gave me that taste, gave me that serotonin, that plant person serotonin. And yeah, I can't wait. So it's just really nice to have plant goals to look forward to. Before we get into that, I'm going to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, which is one of my favorite brands ever. And that is Native. You guys know I love Native deodorants, Native plastic free deodorants. I think that this is actually the perfect time to be talking about Native's deodorants because I know that as we are heading into a new year, a lot of people have goals to be a little bit more green, a little bit more environmentally friendly and making swaps like this is the perfect place to start. Native is my favorite deodorant. I've been using this for years, even before they launched their paper packaging. It's the same formula. It's not sticky. It keeps me smelling good and feeling fresh all day. And my favorite part is of course that they are vegan and cruelty free. I recently stocked up on my three favorite scents. Um, well, at least these are my three favorite scents that are on their permanent line. They are always launching seasonal scents, which is very exciting as well. Um, but this is my ride or die. This is citrus and musk. I love this one. I am, I am much more of like, a spicy kind of herbally scented person so so this is definitely my fave um second is lavender and rose i love anything lavender and the rose just gives a nice like extra little floral punch to this and aloe and green tea the best way that i can describe this one is it smells like you just came out of the shower but you'll smell like that all day if you have been wanting to try out native which i highly recommend you do three of their deodorants are normally 39 dollars but if you use my code wildfern5 you can get three of them for 26 dollars so that's 33 percent off a really awesome deal with that code you can also get 20 percent off of their body washes and toothpaste as well thank you so much to native for sponsoring this video let's get into the plants Okay, you guys, so my first goal, these aren't in any particular order, but the first one that I have on my list is regarding my Monstera Albo. So she's beside me right here. And the goal that I have for this plant for 2022 is to extend her moss pole. So I would love to have this plant become a lot taller. So I would love for this plant to get to the point where I have to purchase a moss pole extension from Trifolia. She is, this is actually, she has two extensions. Well, no, she has one extension. This is like the, the first moss pole, like the main one that I put on. And then this part is an extension, but I really want her to grow tall enough that I have to add another extension. I just really want this to be like a tall plant that can just be like a statement piece. You know what I'm saying? After I add that second extension, I feel like I might chop and prop then to make her a little bit more full but for now i'm really focused on just getting her tall enough to at least add one more extension and this plant has been growing so well for me lately you guys just look at her oh my goodness she is so stinking beautiful so i feel like that is a somewhat realistic goal i feel like i can reach that let me know what you guys think and send me send me the good monster elbow growing vibes like how amazing would she be in the back of my videos just as like a beautiful tall plant Okay, my second goal is to get my silver sword growing up the wood plank that I have it on. Uh, I'm really, really hoping this is something that is going to happen for me. It just recently put out its first roots onto the plank or towards the plank. Um, I don't really know like how stuck on it is. Uh, I haven't like pulled on it or anything because I just don't want to disturb it. This is my first plant that I've grown on a plank and I'm just really, really curious to see if it's actually going to um, encourage maturity and if it's actually going to do well growing on that. I have two vines growing up that board so we'll see what happens but I'm just really hoping that I can get some more mature leaves and just get that plant to grow a little bit bigger. 
hopefully put out some good aerial roots onto that wood and yeah I'm just I'm really curious it's very experimental for me I know that this works amazing for some people um but just everyone has different conditions so it's really it's really variable but I'm hoping that she'll do well so I'll keep you guys updated with that one all right, my next goal is regarding my philodendron micans here, which you guys know I've just been having a moment with it. Um, this plant is finally like growing for me, <laughs> which is very exciting after a couple of years. Uh, so my goal for this year is to create a fuller, a full bushy basket of this plant. And I feel like it's possible. Uh, I am gonna do some chopping and propping in the spring just to, well, it's pretty full, honestly, whoops. It's pretty full, but the thing is, this is a really small pot and I want it, it to be a larger basket. So probably within the next few months, I'll be repotting this and hopefully adding some more cuttings into the top. I just wanna see a full pot of this. Also would love to see the leaves get a little bit bigger. Um, mine is still, you know, the leaves are still quite small. It's very, very pretty and I'm very happy with it. But if I could get bigger leaves, you know, I wouldn't be disappointed. So filling this one out is definitely going to be a project for this year. The fun thing about this video is that you guys will probably come along with me and do a lot of these projects. So yeah, you get to kind of see what's upcoming for this year. Okay, next, this is another one of my hanging plants that I have on my bed frame and it is my Marble Queen Pothos. It is Greta. Yes, my friends, look at how good she is looking. Like, look at these leaves. She is just, this is the newest one, I think. Look at how pretty she is. Just beautiful. She's been growing really well. So my goal for her for 2022 is to get her to trail. I really want to see her trailing. Um, she's like just barely starting. Like she's just leaving the pot here as you can see. But I really want to get a vine or two trailing down. That would just make me so happy to see her trailing again. If you haven't seen my video where I chopped up my 10 year old pothos, she was massive. This came from a very massive, incredible mother plant. Just a moment of silence for Greta. Yeah, she was incredible. Um, so I just really, you know, in her honor, we need to grow this baby out. I wanna see her trail. It's also just gonna look so good hanging on my bed frame once it's trailing a little bit. I've just been missing trailing plants recently. Um, well, not recently, basically since I moved because when I moved, I got rid of all of my large plants and a lot of those were my trailing plants and I chopped this one up, obviously. So I'm just really craving some of these like lush trailing baskets again. So I think that that's gonna be like a big theme for me for this year is just trying to get on track to have some of those long trailing plants back. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that I have the same goal for my golden pothos, which I'm not gonna touch right now because that was a plant that did have thrips and I just, I think they're gone, but I just wanna avoid touching it. But I have a small, very small four inch um, pot of golden pothos and I would love to have that grow out and trail as well. Okay, the next one is regarding my Hoya Crimson Queen. Um, if you have been around here for a while, then you would know I've had this plant for, this will be my third year growing here, her, I think. And she is just this, oh my goodness, she is so gorgeous. Um, probably the prettiest Hoya Crimson Queen I've ever seen. She's so lush, she's so long and trailing. Um, I'm just, I'm absolutely enamored by this plant. And my goal for her this year is to have her bloom. She has never bloomed for me. And I will honestly, I'll probably cry. I was actually tearing up thinking about it I was posting on my Instagram story I was like am I losing my mind you guys and other people were like no I cry about my plants all the time and I was like okay good but honestly when this plant blooms I will probably cry just because I've had her for a while now and I've always just admired her beauty so much she's lived with me in three different places now and she's just so easygoing she is always just my chill plant she's just so incredible and it is like my planty dream to see her bloom if she had multiple blooms on her oh my goodness I would probably croak so cross your fingers for me guys because that's just going to be so amazing to see whenever it happens it's got to happen one of these years right so I'm really hopeful that it's gonna happen this year <laughs> if you guys have any Hoya bloom hacks leave them down below in the comments I would love to hear them so that I can maybe try them out and see if it helps to encourage blooms on her okay the next one is regarding my philodendron brazil I'll, I'll insert footage because it's another one that was thrippy and i don't want to touch um but i've been growing my philodendron brazil up a moss pole for probably at least half a year now um it was quite the process because i completely chopped up a large plant propagated all the cuttings and then potted them all together with a moss pole and i've just been um like guiding it up the moss pole it feels like it's been a really slow process if i'm honest um but you can see 
the mother plant leaves, like the ones at the bottom, are massive. Uh, it was a beautiful, huge philodendron Brazil, and I would just love to get some of those large leaves again. So my goal for this year is to grow this plant at least halfway up the moss pole. It's quite a long moss pole that it's on. So if I can get it halfway up, I feel like... I'm feeling a little ambitious. I feel like I can grow it more than halfway up, maybe up the whole pole in the growing season. I don't know, we'll see. But my goal is to at least grow it halfway up the pole um, and to hopefully be getting some more mature leaves. We shall see, it hasn't really started happening yet, but you know, it takes a little bit of time for plants to establish, especially after being grown from cuttings. So yeah, I've been paying a lot of attention to that plant just because I am so keen on having it grow this year. The next one that I'm gonna talk about is my alocasia black velvet. And I have been struggling with this plant so much, not in the sense that it's like dying, but in the sense that I cannot get it out of the one leaf club. It currently has two leaves, but um, don't be fooled because this one is starting to yellow and it's probably gonna drop. Um, this is a new one that just came out like a week or two ago. Oh, it feels so nice. This plant is absolutely stunning. It is my goal to have a large pot of this one day. If you have seen my alocasia dragon scale, that's a massive alocasia and I would love to see this one get to like the same stage. I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna happen all in this year. It could because my dragon scale grew that big in less than a year. Um, but I at least wanna get it out of the one leaf club. And I know a lot of you have commented telling me to increase fertilizer. I feel like I feed this plant pretty well, but I am going to increase it just to see if that will help. I do also need to clean the algae out of here again. I kind of want to transition this plant back to soil, but I have no idea how that would go transitioning from pond to soil. I feel like I might really be in trouble then, so I might just keep it in pond for a while. But yeah, we'll see if I can get this plant to have multiple leaves in 2022. I'm really hoping so. I feel like it is going to be possible. I feel like we get a little bit stronger at, with every new leaf that comes in, even though we tend to lose one. My next goal is regarding my philodendron splendid here, which is still propagating in water. It is giving me some roots, so that is very exciting. Um, so my goal for this year with this plant, I'm, I'm very in love with this plant, you guys. I would love to have a huge philodendron splendid. So my goal for this plant is to pot these cuttings up with a moss pole and have it grow up a moss pole. Um, I just wanna see some larger leaves. This is a plant that I'm just like very set on having it climb so that it can mature. Another one actually, now that I'm thinking of like plants that I really want to mature on poles is my Philodendron Campos Portuanum. Um, I should have brought that plant in here to talk about as well. But yeah, just wanna get it on a pole. I've already kind of started this process by chopping it up because I want it to be I like my plants on poles to be a little bit more full than just like one vine. I could have just put the one vine on a pole, but this way I have three cuttings and I also have the mother plant, which is living in my cabinet. So that's like four, four separate plants, um, which is going to allow me to create like much more of a lush climbing moss pole situation. So that is my plan for this one. And you guys will probably be seeing this plant a lot this year because like I said I'm just having a moment with it look at it I swear the leaves have a blue sheen like they're just unreal otherworldly if you will okay you guys the next one is to do with my philodendron viricosum look at how pretty she is oh this plant makes me so happy um okay so my goal for this plant for this year is to get it to be more mature. Um, now when I say mature my plants, I know that I'm not going to get them. To, I don't mean like full maturity, okay? I just mean more mature than they are now. So this is what it is currently looking like. This is one of the newest leaves. It has one that is also just coming out right there, which I think is gonna be a pretty decent size. But as you guys can see, she has almost reached the top of the pole. There's two vines in here. This one has about one more leaf until um, it's past the top of the pole. And then this one, actually that one, the next leaf is gonna be past the pole. And then this one has about one more leaf until we're reaching the top of the pole. So at that point, I'm either going to add an extension so that I can grow it taller, um, in which case I'll have to move this out of the Ikea cabinet, or I'm going to chop it, propagate, and then restart on another pole so that I can kind of start off with a more mature leaf. Um, because obviously this one was started from really small leaves. So if I start with one of these leaves on the bottom, then I'll be able to get bigger and so on and so on. 
So let me know which one you think I should do. Should I do the moss pull extension or should I do the trop, the, the trop, the chop and prop? Give me your input because I'm really like 50-50 on it. I haven't decided which route I want to go, but I do need to decide soon because she is a very fast grower. I think that either way, I'm going to get closer to my goal of seeing those more mature leaves. So I'm just so excited to see what this next year is going to bring for this plant. Like I said, it grows so fast. It's been really easy to care for so far for me. And I think that it's only going to get better as time progresses and as it becomes more mature. Okay, the next goal is regarding my Hoya linearis, which is living inside my Mills Botol. It's been in there for a while now, and it has just been growing out of control. This thing is honestly taking over my Mills Bow. It's like draped over a bunch of other plants, and it's just like pressed against the glass. It's just wild. Um, it's definitely outgrowing the cabinet. So my goal for this year is to move it into my bedroom. I'm thinking of having it um, join the plants that are hanging off of my canopy bed frame, but I'm a little worried about light. I did have some people commenting on one of my previous videos that they have grown Hoya linearis in like a bit of a lower light situation, so I might just go for it and try it out. Um, I mean, I guess during the spring and summer I'll be getting some pretty decent light in here because we'll have more sun. But that's a plant that definitely needs to come out of the cabinet and I definitely want to put some work in to um, kind of have that become a more lush hanging basket plant as well. I'll probably do some propagating with it so you can look forward to that. And then my last goal, this is like my one kind of general goal that I'm throwing in here and it is that I want to maintain my moss poles better. I am just, I'm really into climbing plants lately <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed. And I've just been learning a lot more about moss poles and how to care for them better. I'll probably be sharing more of what I've learned in future videos, but I'm just feeling a lot more dedicated to keeping my moss moist so that those roots can actually grow into it and take up nutrients and whatnot. I will say that a really great resource for climbing plants is Sydney Plant Guy. His Instagram is absolutely incredible. If you do not follow him, you need to go check it out. Like his plants... I am just blown away whenever he posts um, and he has some really great information about moss poles so I've kind of adapted um, some of the things that he does into my own plant care routine. So like I said I will keep you guys updated on how my moss pole journey is going but I think that is going to be it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these planty projects and goals that I have talked about. Also, don't forget to check out Native if you are interested. The link will be down below in the description. Thank you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!